Good morning, everyone. How are you today? It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Why don't you go get your family, your friends, call somebody, share with them that we are worshiping God online this morning. Why don't you go get the children, the husband or the wife, call and let them know that we are in a sense of worship this morning. We welcome you this morning. I don't know, you may be new. My name is Michael Button. I'm the senior pastor here at Greater Friendship Baptist Church in Anchorage, Alaska, the best church on the planet. Amen. With the best members and the best staff, the best musicians, we worship the Lord in this place in spirit and in truth. So we want to tell you, welcome, welcome, welcome. As we prepare to lift our lives to the Lord in a sense of worship today, we ask that you would just come alongside us no matter where you are. You may be in your car in your garage and you need some private time. You may be still laying in the bed with your PJs on. <laughs> Amen. You may be in your living room. You may be in your kitchen. You may be eating breakfast. But we don't want you to neglect the seriousness of worship. We do. We ask that you would take time right now, sit in a quiet place that you would hear the word of God, that you would be able to focus. We're going to talk about that, spending time with Holy Spirit in a sense of loving him and respecting him. So as we come even now into this place of worship, we want you to seek and expect a word from the Lord. Amen. We love you. We love you. Good morning. The word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times. It's Praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I'm going to say that again. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. What does that mean? What does it mean to magnify? It means that we're going to make God bigger than our problems. God bigger than every circumstance. So, oh, magnify the Lord with me. No matter what you're going through, make God bigger. Hallelujah. And let us exalt his name together. He says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And this is Psalms 34. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. And we're going to stop right there. Lord, we bless you today. We thank you. We magnify you in this place today. Lord, we do. We slow ourselves down right now. Even as, Lord God, our parishioners, our listeners, we pray even now that they would settle themselves, that they would stop talking even now, stop communicating. Let's act as though you're in the sanctuary and listen for the voice of the Lord. So we pray even now for those, Lord God, who may be sick and bereaved this morning and less fortunate than ourselves. We, we pray, Lord God, that it would not be a distraction or a barrier for the reward of the word that you're giving today. So we bless those, Lord God, who may be sick. We pray for now healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for those the Lord is sharing with me, those that are in debt right now. You're worrying about your bills. And the Lord is saying, even now, in the name of Jesus, give it to him. He will take care of it. So trust him in all your ways and lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He'll do your wreck your path. So trust him today. Release that problem even now that you would have a pure mind of worship. Release that relationship. Release even now every anxiousness, every sense of anxiety, anger, unforgiveness. We rebuke you spirits of the evil on the devil himself in flesh and carnal mind. And now we come walking in the spirit. We pray a filling of the spirit even now in the name of Jesus that we would receive Lord God all that you have for us. Use me Lord God in your service today that Lord God your people would be blessed. We thank you. We love you. Amen. Amen. And thank God. You need to give the Lord praise in the house today and know that he has your problem already taken care of. He wants you to relax and rejoice in him right now. Give him the glory and the honor. If you trust him, put a smile on your face today. Hallelujah. Our mission statement says we are to lead a dying world into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. 
our Lord. Our very existence is about having a relationship with Jesus, relationship with others. The devil wants you to have that destroyed, but we're going to walk even by faith. Our vision is what? We will love. That's relational. Love is a decision. We will love and train disciples and through the word of God and through his Holy Ghost power. Amen. So we thank you for our mission and our vision statement this morning. So as we come before you, I got a little old school in me this, in this morning. I want to do something old for our mothers and, and for those that are a little older. So a song says, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. You know this, right? Amen. Come on, all of you that are out there. Our, our old folk going to teach you youngsters how to sing this song this morning. It says, I woke up this morning with my mind. Is your mind stayed on him today? Hallelujah. We're going to bless him. Hey, I woke up this morning with my mind. It was stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind. It was stayed on the Lord. You know I woke up this morning with my mind. It was stayed. Hey, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is your mind stayed on the Lord today? Is it stayed on God? Don't let the worries of the world distract you. I know many of us, even myself this morning, I got up and I started just thinking about things instead of placing my mind strictly on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? Right now I'm free in him. So if you have your Bibles this morning, let's go to John 14. Our devotional scripture this morning is going to be the same scripture that we're going to use for our text. That's John 14, starting with verse 12. Go get your Bibles, your pens, and your papers. And guys, I really hope 
that you are writing these scriptures down and as we go throughout the week that you're going back and the Holy Spirit will remind you. It brings back things to your remembrance. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about that today. Be excited. The Lord is about to transform your life. I don't care if you've been in church 100 years. He's going to do a new thing in you. Now look at what this says. He's going to do a greater work in you today. It says, most assuredly. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. The words that I do, shall he do also. And now watch this. And greater works than these shall he do. The Lord is saying you're going to do greater works than him. That sounds crazy, don't it, if you don't know who Jesus is. But he says you're going to do greater works than him because why? He's got to go into the Father. He says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you, watch this, another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. He'll never leave you. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am my, in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. And we're going to end right there. We're going to continue with that scripture in our worship today. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So we thank God for the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And so we bless you today. We once again welcome you in the house of the Lord. Do you know that the church is in you? You may not be in the edifice, the sanctuary, the brick and mortar, but the church is in your heart. So we welcome you this morning. We are on one accord. Why don't you give us a check-in if you're here? And why don't you tell your friends to get online? There's a word for someone today that is going through discomfort. You're going through anxiety, and I'm going to share about that, and you're going to be free. The yoke is going to be destroyed. I didn't say broken because you can fix broken stuff. But when it's destroyed, you cannot repair it. And the Lord is going to destroy the yoke of what's binding you today. So we welcome you. Why don't you take a selfie? Send it to our Greater Friendship Baptist Church page that we would know you're on sharing with us this morning. We want to tell you how much we love you and how much we miss you. Amen. Say good morning to somebody in your room. They still might be wiping asleep out their eyes, but just tell them good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a great day to be alive. Amen. Sun is shining. You got your health and your strength or even a reasonable portion therein. Focus on the goodness of God today, guys. Focus on how much he loves you. Just think about him today. Even as we prepare to give, we want you to understand today that the Lord desires that we give back unto him. As we say in greater friendship, he doesn't need your money. But we need to give him what is his. And so we get to give back. Not that we have to. So why don't you give unto the Lord your tithe or your offering. We know that the Lord says 10%, but that is just a measuring point. It says that he don't want you to give out of composure. He wants you to be a cheerful giver. He may want you to give 30%, 40%. It doesn't matter. And he wants you to give as your tithe, a tenth unto him and your offering. So he wants you to be able to trust him with your resources today. Hallelujah. He just wants you to trust him with your finances. 
Why don't you trust them today? Many of you are trying to hang on to that last dollar or two. And the Lord says, you just got to open your hands and release so that you can receive. Amen. That's a word for somebody today. Hallelujah. So let me pray with you. Get your tithe and your offering in your hand or it's in your spirit, in your bank account. You know, you can go to PayPal or you can mail it to us. We will pick it up or you can drop it off tomorrow from 10 to 2.30 here at the physical location of Greater Friendship Baptist Church. Let us pray over your seed. I remind you, this is a seed that you're planting, a financial seed, so that it'll bring a harvest unto you. Hallelujah. Wait until the seed harvests, and believe me, you'll get a great, great crop and a great reward. Lord, we bless you today. We come even now in the name of Jesus. And we're coming to those, Lord God, who are fearful of giving. Lord, even myself have went through a, a, a sense of anxiety about our finances. But Lord, you keep reminding me that if I give, it'll be given back unto me, pressed down and shaking over what men give from their bosoms. So we know, God, that our intent first to give is that we love you and that we trust you. And then, Lord God, we expect a return because you are faithful to your word today. So bless each and every household today. Lord, some are struggling. Some are off work. But Lord, we pray an increase in that house supernaturally, Lord. You said men will give from their bosom. So let a man or uh, mankind come into their lives and share with them and just give them. Let them see you in their giving today. But Lord, even in their receiving the more. Hallelujah, Lord. Freely you give, freely we receive. So bless each and every penny, every dime, every dollar. We command a thousand-fold return even now in the name of Jesus, whether it be in spirit, mind, body, soul, finances, health. Lord, whatever it is, we receive. We thank you, and we love you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Give unto the Lord today. We thank you for your giving. We love you, and we bless you today. Now we come into the point where we go to the throne of grace. The Bible says that we can come boldly, to the throne of grace and that means speaking without hesitation speaking without fear that we go to the throne of grace understanding that our father loves us where we will obtain mercy and grace in the time of need so you may be here today and I know that many have went through some trials and tribulations this week and I must share with you th this week I struggled I don't know if it's just because of the distancing of, you know, you as a body of Christ here physically with us. And my wife was saying that she struggled somewhat this week. And uh, we pray for Sister Shonda, who lost her brother in a car accident, just taken away. God wants us to not take for granted the time that we have with one another. We lift up Deacon Farrell as one of his family members is dealing with the COVID-19. We're praying for the Coleman family where they have family members dealing with COVID-19 and I left up my wife's family that her cousin had COVID-19 we were on a Zoom call yesterday and we were able to see her face and she looks better so we thank God that he is healing and people are recovering some of you are dealing with sickness not only in your physical body but in your spirit your spirit is sick and the Lord is saying I want to restore you I want to renew you no matter what your husband or your wife is saying or your children or your job the Lord says listen if you would just spend some one on one time with me I can change it all around if you let me so why don't you yield to him today no matter what you're going through the Lord wants to release his blessing upon you that you would receive as he said to the disciples, let me breathe on you. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive his blessings on you today. So let us bow in prayer. You may want to touch hands, even our students. We know that our students are dealing with school online and, and it's tough for them, especially our middle schoolers that are not used to the technology. So we pray for our students today. We pray for the teachers and the principals and the professors. We lift them today, the frontline workers, Miss Gina, Miss Latara. 
We pray for you, Reverend Rogers. We know that you guys are on the front line and many others that are going into their job sites. So let us pray together. Why don't you touch someone if you desire? And if you're alone, just put your hand on your heart, wherever you may have pain in your head. If you're having problems with thoughts, put your hand on your head. Lay hands on yourself today. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, recognizing the fact that you are the God of gods. We come, Lord Jesus, understanding the fact that we are nothing without you. So, Lord, we worship you. We adore you today. We magnify you. Even now, we make you bigger than every problem, every circumstance, every sickness, every disease, every debt. Lord, you are bigger. You are greater. And, Lord, you said in your word that if we trust you, that we will do greater works. So we stand in the realm of greater works today. Hallelujah. With our heads held high, not bent down out of dismay or disgust. But Lord, we come boldly to your throne today. So we come in the name of Jesus, Lord God, confessing our sins in the privacy of your own conscience, Lord. There, there's a releasing there when we confess. We don't confess to be forgiven, Lord. We confess because we declare our forgiveness. It's a releasing God. So we are righteous in spirit, Lord. And we even bring now, even Lord God, into subjection our body, our mind, our soul, our emotions, our wills, our desires. So we come, Lord God, with the feeling of the Holy Ghost, ushering in the holy anointing in this place. So, Lord, we're thankful today. Many may not think that they have anything to be thankful for, but, Lord, if we would look back on our lives, Father, and see how far you've brought us from, Lord, we would rejoice in you. So, Lord, we come with the fruit of the Spirit. We release the faith and the love and the joy, the peace, the gentleness and the kindness, the self-moderation, the meekness, Lord. We command it to rise up even out of the bellies, Lord God, where the rivers flow that you would overwhelm us with your love, God, that we wouldn't see the negative distractions, that we wouldn't be fearful or afraid, Lord God, of COVID-19 or, or, Lord God, every essence of financial despondency, negative and bitter relationships. Lord, right now we focus on you, Lord God. The Lord is telling someone to sit down and be quiet. His prayers for you today. Focus on him today. Take not for granted the power and the love of Jesus Christ. We come before you saying thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would bless our seniors today. Those who are living alone, God. Those who are single. Well, Lord God, we know that right now that there's not a lot to do to go out and fellowship with others and to mingle and to embrace and to laugh and to joke without a worry and anxiety or a fear. But Lord, you are our help. You are our company, Jesus. And so we come rejoicing in your company today. We sit still before you and speak to us, God, in our spirit, through your word. Strengthen us by the power of the word of God in the name of Jesus. So we rejoice, Lord. We take a breath. Take a breath today. Let's receive his grace. Receive his mercy. So, Father, we thank you. So we bless each and every one that can see and all that can hear and even those that are sending up petitions of prayer for family members. Lord, you said bless those who persecute us. We left even our enemies today. We pray that we, Lord God, would walk into restored relationships and that we would be the catalyst of forgiveness because you have forgiven us, God. So we destroy the yoke of unforgiveness. We destroy the yoke of past failures in the name of Jesus and we come strong Lord God standing on your word knowing that even now Jesus you are Lord and you are God we love you and we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name we pray thank God amen and amen why don't you give the Lord praise right in your home today we're grateful 
or the opportunity just to be before you today to share the love of Jesus Christ. And I shared with our family today how blessed we are to be in the house of the Lord. And I did. I feel a little oldness in my spirit. The song says, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I know a lot of the older folk will understand this song. As we sung, I woke up this morning with my mind. But this is a song that I remember my dad used to sing and my mom used to sing years and years ago. And it is a song that has always blessed my heart. And it goes a little like this. I need you like the ocean needs the water or it will run dry. I need you like the many stars above needs the settings of the sky. Take your time. I need you like tomorrow needs the hours of today to pass by. Lord, I need you more than ever, so hear my humble cry. I need the never to forsake. Come on, I need my seniors to sing this with me. I need the oh, I need thee every on you today, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, right where we are. Thank you. No matter what we're going through, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're our comforter, God. Thank you, Lord, that you're in control. Thank you. We bless you, Jesus. So even now, go before us, man, and word of God. And even now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall on your man servant today, Jesus, that you would be the teacher. Lord, even block the vision, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Let them not see the man, but hear the message, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Let us get into the word of God today. I'm so excited about what the Lord is going to share with us today. We will continue to walk in the word in the book of John. We want you to get your pen and your paper. This is going to be vital for you. This is going to transform your life. The Lord gave me a breakthrough on some things during this COVID-19. As I was spending time with him, he began to share with me some things. Because things, it seems as though, was not changing. And I was getting discouraged, and even whether it be uh, worldwide or nationally, whether it be ministerially, and it was just a lie from the devil. Hallelujah. The devil is lying. He, you know he's a liar and the father of lies. He's an accuser of the brethren. All he wants to do is discourage you. He's a liar. And you can tell him right now, devil, you a liar. You have no authority here, no reign here. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I lift mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Walk in the joy of the Lord today. Turn your Bibles. Hallelujah. I got to start preaching. I'm getting a little happy today. John 14. Let's go back to our text. It's the same one as our devotional. And we're going to share some things with you. John 14. And I'm going to read that scripture again. I'm going to read the entirety of it this time. And it says, starting with verse 12, 14. Reading out of the KJV. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believeth on me the works that, works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. A lot of people know that verse, but there's a stipulation there. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Only way you'll get your prayers answered is that God is glorified in it. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it if it glorifies God. I know many people use this verse. Lord, you said if I ask anything in your name, you'll do it if it glorifies the Father. Amen. Somebody need to hear that today. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. Jesus was a praying man, and he shall give you another comforter. Amen. That he may abide with you forever. Now watch this. Even the spirit of truth. I just told you the devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. But who's the spirit of truth? Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, is the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Mm, that's if you're carnal and secular. Because it seeth him not. Because they're looking with their eyes. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. Why? Because he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So if you're a born again believer, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He has made residence in your spirit. Amen. It says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And I had to meditate on this because I wasn't feeling confident. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And what's the commandment? The greatest commandment is to do what? Love, love, love. Yes, many of us have broken some of the commandments in the sense of our sinful nature this week and even this morning. But the commandment that Jesus wants us to keep is the commandment that we love one another. Amen. So it says... At that day, ye shall know that I am in that Father, and ye in me, and I in ye. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judah saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, 
How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Watch this. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. This is a key verse. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, same thing. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. The Lord's word is blessed. So for focal point this morning, write this down. I want you to write this down. Walking in comfort with Holy Spirit. Walking in comfort with Holy Spirit. And that is big, bold letters. So why are we speaking on that? Because as I have been in communion with the Lord. Now, this, is, this, this all has a premise. And this has all began to happen uh, since COVID-19. And so myself, and I'm talking from a personal level here, and I want you to understand me. That now my days are structured differently. And so now the busyness that many of us used to be engaged in, some has increased, but some has decreased. I mean, for example, my wife works from home now. My children are working from home. And it's not like the duties have become limited, but the schedule has become somewhat more lackadaisical. Not saying that you're not doing as much, but the schedule is a little different now. So what am I saying? When, I, when the Lord gave me this walking in comfort with Holy Spirit. As of March 15th, CDC closed down the churches in regards to large gatherings and other institutions. And so we were not able to meet in the church house anymore. Uh, we are meeting Zoom and, and teleconference and things of that nature. So now that I don't have to take my daughters to school is what I've been doing for 17 years. I've always got them to school uh, from infants until this very time, high school, middle school, whatever the case. So my mornings was scheduled uh, 6.30 to 7.30. I study, take a daughter to school, and then I come back, study, and take a daughter to school, come back, study, take another one to college and to school. So now I don't have to do that anymore. Now I'm going somewhere with this because this is how I'm sharing with you what God is sharing with me. So now I have the opportunity to wake up and go walking. I can wake up and go walking. And I go and walk and I go and meditate on the Lord. And I go and speak with him. And I'll, I'll take my phone just to listen to the word. But most times I don't have my phone. I don't want any interruptions. I want to hear what the Lord is saying to me. I want to hear his voice. So I walk a lot now. I mean, I walk miles now on a daily basis. I'll go and, uh, to a park or to a track and I'll walk. So while I'm walking, as you can see, that's in our scripture, I am being comforted by the Lord. So how can we do that? I'm being comforted with Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit is comforting my spirit. So what do you mean? So this is what I want to talk about today, because the Lord has been sharing us with us about being filled with the Spirit. We know that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. John 14 just shared that with us, correct? Amen. So we receive that by faith. Amen. So we are in communion with Holy Ghost. So as I'm walking, now watch this now, because this is how it was, because before I started having that time to walk with him every day and I literally mean walk and the Lord is telling some of us to walk we need to walk a little to get some exercise not only physically but to exercise our minds and our spirits as we speak to the Lord Jesus Christ so as I'm walking I'm sharing with him I'm sharing with Holy Spirit the intimate things of my life. And now I got him all to myself. He has me all to himself. No phone is on. Nobody's talking and walking with me. And so, and this is the, the, the epiphany that I've received since this COVID-19. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The COVID-19 can distance you from God or it can bring you closer. Like I shared last week, many of us are spiritual distancing ourselves 
from Jesus as we're physically distancing ourselves from people. But the Lord is saying, I want to get closer to you in this pandemic. I need to be closer with you. I need you to understand that I ain't going nowhere. I'm not going anywhere. The problem is you just not acknowledge me. So even with you, while I was walking, and many of us right now, as I've shared, there's been a lot of crisis situations happened in our church and in our homes. And it's been somewhat of a struggle this week. And I was saying, Lord, why am I struggling? You know, and, and I know I'm not getting depressed. I know I'm not getting discouraged. And many of you, I rebuke the spirit of depression right now in the name of Jesus, the spirit of discouragement. Uh, many of us are falling into a dark place. Get out of it. <laughs> Jesus is the light of the world. Get out of it. Youth, get out of it. Especially our youth. Get out of the darkness. Begin to commune with the Holy Spirit. So listen, we have the Holy Ghost. So listen, if we already have the Holy Spirit in us, when we were born again, the Holy Ghost came to dwell within us. Every believer has it, every convert. But what's the difference between the sincere intimacy that we experience as believers? Many people have been in church all their life. Listen, I'm talking to me first, 57 years, and have not really experienced a sense of intimacy with Holy Spirit. Because it's just some of us, we know that the Trinity is a mystery. We know that there's God the Father, Jehovah God, and we know that there's Jesus Christ the Savior. Then we know that there's the Holy Spirit. They're all one. Holy Spirit as much as God as Jesus is God. So, you know, oftentimes, now listen, it's not your fault. Don't get, it, don't get it wrong now. That many of us just don't know how to approach it. And let me tell you, that's why we have to be intimate with Holy Spirit so he can reveal himself to you. The Lord took me to the book of Revelation. And I always thought, you know, in a sense, just not thinking, that it was the re- revelation of John. But if you look at that, 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 the book of Revelation, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the Lord wants to reveal to you, listen at this, just as he revealed to John in Revelation, things that are taking place in your life, how to approach some things. So the Holy Spirit, so how do we do it? We, we have the Holy Spirit in us, so how do we approach him? Who is he? Well, in Genesis 1, in the verse 2, it says Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth before it was formed. In verse 26, it says, Genesis 1 and 26, it says, let us make man. Us means it was God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so Holy Spirit has been around. Unfortunately, we always have to put people in a hierarchy, and that is all, all so true in our secular world. But in the kingdom of God, where Jesus is and where the Father is, they are one. They have the same authority, the same power, the same glory. So sometimes we overlook the Holy Spirit. Now listen, so who is he? So why is it that I'm missing him seem like? Because listen, I know I'm not talking to myself only because there were several years that I did. I miss him. I went to church more than probably anybody watching on this program. I got three brothers preachers, a sister preacher, a brother-in-law, a nephew, two nephews. Uh, my mama's a preacher. She just won't admit it. And my daddy was a preacher. And, and so I, I've been around preaching. I've been around church. And I've been around the other side of, the, uh, of my lifetime as well. But let me tell you, there is a relationship that many of us have failed to establish with the Holy Spirit. And it's not that you're a bad Christian. I keep sharing with you about the second encounter with the Ephesians, the second encounter with Apollos, and we've shared that. And the Lord says in Acts 2, wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Wait, these disciples that were with him, these teachers that were teaching, he said, listen, there's something else. So many of us, now listen, and and whose fault is it? It, it, You listen, I don't blame the folk. I I I blame a lot on on the preachers behind the pulpit that we've not conveyed it effectively enough for you to experience the fruit of the Spirit. Now listen, see, I just threw that in there, right? Go to Galatians 5, and 23. Go there. Because listen, many of you will understand why you're not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because even in Luke 4, it says that Jesus was led into the wilderness. But in 14, as he was tempted 40 days, a time of testing, it says that he was what? Empowered. Now, we're talking Jesus, guys. 
those words are just not through in the Bible just to be taken up space. Jesus had to be filled. He had to be led. And he had to be empowered. You got to get this. And we're talking Jesus. Can't get no simpler than that. So who had to empower him? Who had to fill him? Who has to empower us? Who has to fill us? It's the Holy Spirit. And many of us are, listen, let me put this disclaimer here. It's millions have went to heaven that have been great Christians but have never experienced the filling of the Holy Ghost. That's the disclaimer so people won't feel guilty. Don't mean you're not going to heaven, but listen, you're not fulfilling the ultimate purpose of your life and your servitude to mankind and the church without the filling of the Holy Ghost. And many of you, listen, and oh man, I almost nearly jumped to my last point, but I ain't going to do that. So the Holy Spirit is who? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God that dwells in you. And listen, so many of you are saying, well, you know, I, I'm saved. So I know the Holy Spirit is in me. You know, he dwells within me. John 14 just said that. But, you know, how do I get filled? Do I even want to get filled? And many of us have never even heard that uh, in, 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 in most cases. I told you I just got turned on to it years ago. So, how do you do it? So, it's by faith. Listen, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. And I just read that because it's up, but this is somewhere else I want to go. Meekness, temperance. I'm going to come back. Go to Colossians 2.6. Now, go to Colossians 2.6. This is very, very important. And I'm about to close. Check this out. Because we're going to camp here for a minute. And let me tell you, I'm telling you, you're going to transform your life. Go to Colossians 2 and 6. I know you got to find it. I'm going to give you time. And you can find it in whatever translation because this is what I'm about to approach. Well, how do I get filled? I've been making it all these years with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I was born again. Time you said, Lord, I surrender. The Holy Spirit came into my life, and now he is in my life. He dwells with me. And so how do you do that? Now, listen, this, this, is, this is so important because many people think you got to work for it and you got to do this. It, it, it read Colossians 2 and 6. It says, As ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. And go to the next verse. I just want to throw this out, and then we're going to go back to 7. Now listen to what it says. Rooted and built up in him, and what? Established in the faith. As ye have been taught, somebody had to teach, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now go back to 6. So I just explained to you who Holy Spirit is in a nutshell. And guys, Google it. <laughs> you know, we sit there, we got all this technology, and, and, and the Lord is saying, listen, if you got some problems with some stuff, Google it. Let the Lord lead you to a good description, more in-depth of what Holy Spirit is all about, and a lot of other subjects that you're puzzled about that you claim you don't understand, but you won't spend time in the Word to get the revelation. The Lord is saying, it's time now. It's time now. So it says, as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So what does that mean? That means as you came to the altar, or many of us, I was born in church, and I know that's kind of a cliche exam, but my mom and dad was Christians, and my father was pastor when I got bo uh, well, was born. So it was, it was no choice <laughs> to be saved. I'm try just trying to be honest. Some of y'all in the same boat, you, you in your house, your mother or your father might not have been your daddy, but your mother went to church, and you know what? You went to church. So it says, as ye have therefore received Christ. So it's saying, as you said, Lord, okay, I surrender. Here's my life to you. You did that by faith. How else can you move forward knowing that you was a wretched sinner? Now get this. You are a wretch. Many of you know your life was jacked up. You were some of the, did some of the worst stuff, hurt some folk. You was this, that, the other. And the Lord said, listen, as you have therefore received me, Jesus Christ, walk in me. So it's saying, listen, by faith, if you believe I done forgave you of all your sins. I'm talking about faith, ladies and gentlemen. If you believe I done forgave you of all your sins, even the sins you committed today. And yesterday, but you still can believe 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You do that by faith. So the same thing in regards to the filling of the Holy Spirit. 
You, you say, Lord, listen, I'm going to walk you through this. This is important because some of your lives, are, you're, you're, you're stunted in your spiritual growth. You're suffering from spiritual malnutrition. You might know a lot, but you're stunted spiritually. And so the Lord is saying, if you can believe that I've forgiven you of every sin that you've ever committed, past, present, and future, as ye have therefore received me in that, well, you need to walk in that. Walk in the faith of Jesus Christ. So how, what are you talking about? So the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Now we'll move from the dwelling which we all got when we were converted. Now the, the Bible says now we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So what is baptism? We do baptism here. It's ordinance of the church, baptism and communion. So our, our, our belief, our doctrine is that when you be, give your life to Christ, you are baptized as a public display in a sense, to share with others that now you are a follower of Christ. Baptism is a symbolism of you going in. That pool is, some people call it the liquid grave. And so what it happens, you get in that liquid grave, we dump you, boom, I'll dump you down, and you come back up, and it's supposed to uh, resemble that you are now dead to the world, come back up, and now you're a new life. You have new life. you got to believe that by faith. So the same thing with the Holy Ghost. You say, Lord, now this is for those who don't. Some of you have the filling of the Holy Ghost, but you just ain't utilizing it. And I take that back. I retract that. Because if you was filled, you utilize it. You're just not taking advantage of what's going on in your life. So you say, Lord, this is where we are. I'm going to close pretty soon with this. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, because people don't understand that, it's a one-time event. Just like I need to baptize you one time. Some people want to get baptized twice. They were younger when they did it. They didn't understand it. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit happens one time. After you're baptized once, you say, Lord, I know it's more. That's where, how I came to my, my, my breaking point. I said, Lord, I know it's more to my life than this. I've been in church all my life. I've even been preaching since 1986. But, Lord, there, it just seemed I'm just dry. I know a lot. I read the Bible. You know, and, and, and you know, I, I, I can learn Greek and I can learn Hebrew and all of that stuff. And I know about the dispensations. But you know what? That don't help nobody that's this suffering. People are just trying to be impressed with how much they know. It don't mean nothing. How's your heart? So you have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You say, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, will you baptize me with your Holy Spirit? And you got to do that. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So you have to receive that by faith. It is not going to be a whole lot of uh, uh, sparks flying everywhere and, you know, you got this great epiphany. It's not always like that. There could be times that it is, but there's times that it's not. You got to do it by faith. You got to believe God by faith that you ask and you receive. He desires that you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it empowers you. Hallelujah. It empowers you. Then you begin to be able to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. Then you will walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Go back to Galatians 5:22. I'm going to have to start on this next week. Hallelujah. I ain't bit more done with two points. So Galatians 5.22, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, after you're baptized, I'm going to close on this because we're going to come back, then you ask the Lord to fill you. Now, being filled is daily, sometimes minute by minute. Because you can get around some people you feel, and after 30 seconds with them, you done depleted your stuff because you're ready to strangle them because they're so crazy. You got to say, Lord, fill me up. Because if you don't, I might be on the news. So you got to say, fill me, Lord, so that I won't say this, so that I won't do this. So there's filling is, is reoccurring. It's reoccurring to be filled, reoccurring, reoccurring. So you got to understand, in spite of what you're going through, you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you can walk into, if you're depressed all the time, you're not filled. If you're angry all the time, you're not filled. If you're impatient, you're not filled. If you're not gentle, you're not filled. If you don't do things in goodness and faith and temperance, you're not filled. So you know what? You got to say, Lord, fill me. I'm, not, I'm missing it there. And the Lord is not surprised when we fall and falter. And you say, Lord, fill me because right now I don't, I don't feel the presence of the Lord. And, but he's saying you keep on relying on how you feel. 
but you're not relying on your faith. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is faith, but the gift of the Spirit is the gift of faith. And when you're filled with the Holy Ghost and empowered with the Holy Ghost, there's another level of faith. Hallelujah. Oh, man, I like to preach on that. But the Lord will move you into another realm of faith. Somebody has told me twice that it's crazy faith. But that's when you're filled. And go to Romans 5 and 5 in my clothes. And I'm going to talk about just for a second. Being filled with the Holy Spirit brings love out of you. And hope maketh not ashamed. I like to read that whole thing, but I'm not. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. By who? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. If you are not lovable and you don't love, you're not filled with the Spirit. You're not filled with Holy Spirit. So this week, ask him. Say, Lord, baptize me. Go in your secret place. I know you may not be bold enough to do it in front of everybody. Lay hands on yourself because they say, I can't come over and lay hands on you. Some of you may be fearful of that. So you say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Yes, in some of the books of the Bible, some people began to speak in tongues when they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But that wasn't everybody. There's instances where they wasn't speaking in tongues. That's an outward sense of evidence. But that don't mean if you're not speaking in tongues that you're not filled. That's the biggest lie some churches will tell you. Oh, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a lie. I'm going to say that straight up. It's not true. It's not true. As many great saints as went to heaven, did great jobs, and then spoke one tongue. So don't get caught up on that. I can't even explain that right now to you, but we're going to move forward. So listen. Ask the Lord to fill you this time of anxiety, this time of worry and concern, the Lord wants to give you peace, and you need supernatural peace. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit rises up in you. So ask Him to fill you. And the Lord wants me to tell you today that you're doing a good job because you're becoming more conscious of His presence. Amen. You're becoming more conscious of Don't believe the devil. He's an accuser of the brethren. Oh, I'm not reading enough. I'm not doing this enough. In some cases, that's true. But stand on the word of God that he loves you and he knows your frame and he's not upset with you. He's not mad at you. He's mad about you. Stand strong. You are on the right track. Amen. Oh, Holy Ghost, I got to end right now. But I'm coming back next week and talk to you about why some of us are not filled. Amen. I'm almost going into it. Let me pray right now before I start talking. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We bless you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the profound word that you have given me personally. And now we pray in the name of Jesus that those, Lord, that require the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, they don't understand that you're setting them up that many of them would not have the boldness to do it in the sanctuary around others. So you're saying, go to your secret place, and you go and you say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to be baptized with your Holy Ghost. Yes, you may be utterances of tongues may come out, but no, if they don't, trust them by faith, not by feeling. And that point on, you say, Lord, fill me. Let me tell you, he will fill you in the name of Jesus. You will love more. You will be more gentle. And he's changing me. He's changing us in the name of Jesus. So we bless you today and we pray the covering of the Spirit of God over these today. In the name of Jesus, we pray, thank God, amen. You may be listening today and you want to know who Jesus is. You have opportunity to go before him and say, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for me on Calvary's cross and that you rose on the third day. And I commit my life to you even now in the name of Jesus. So we know that now the word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Only believe. Believe him today, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to join a church home, come on and call us. Give us your name. We'll direct you to a Bible-believing church. You don't have to join this church, but at least allow us to pray for you. You can Facebook, chat us, or whatever the case, email us, and we will pray with you. We, it doesn't matter where you are. We want to tell you that we love you today. So if you are out there, why don't you receive even now the name of Jesus Christ in your life? Amen. We love you. We love you. We love you. We thank you so much for being with us today. We have a couple of announcements that we would like to share with you. 
We are so grateful for what's taking place, even in the essence of this pandemic. We want you to understand that God loves you so much. We will be talking more about discipleship on Wednesday for our prayer and our Bible study. We ask that you would get online. Hallelujah, Lord. The Lord is just pressing upon my heart that many of you need to be on the prayer line. You keep going through these things, but you won't give time for prayer. Not even let anyone pray with you. So you need to get on the prayer line from 6.30 to 7 on Wednesday. Let us pray with you. And then 7 to 8, we have our Bible class of 7.40. Kind of abbreviated it since you're online. I want to keep your attention. So why don't you get online with us? Also, May 24th is going to be our graduation Sunday. We have two graduates, Dee Brianna and Red, and we want them to know that we love them. Many of the graduates that are out there, college, whatever, we know that this school year has been something different. But we want to share with you that we love you. Our scholarship committee has set up a venue up on this Saturday that you would be able to come through at 1 p.m., May 23rd, that's this Saturday, and that's all of our members come and drive through, drop off a gift, some flowers to Brother Red Tyler and Dee Brianna. Those are our two graduates, but that's going to happen this Saturday, May 23rd at 1 p.m. Just come by, wave at them, tell them how proud of them you are. I mean, if the church won't appreciate them, the world will. And we want the church to appreciate them. So come out, bring them a card, bring them a gift, and let them know that we're proud of them. Hallelujah. So we're grateful. We thank God. Also, we know that Deacon Sims will be leaving soon. He and his awesome wife. And we just wanted to tell them farewell. We love you and we miss you so, so very much. Uh, Miss uh, Cherry and we thank God for them and we're going to miss them so. They're boxing up things right now. One of the deacons on our deacon board and he is absolutely awesome. I love him. I love him. I love him. Deacon Sims, we love you. We're going to miss you. You'll always have a place here at Greater Friendship Baptist Church. Amen. We love you, Sister Sims. We're going to miss you. Go home and be with Mommy. We know that Miss Cat is waiting on you, but we want to tell you how much we love and appreciate you both. Amen. Last thing is I want to share with you the state of our church in regards to the COVID-19. And I know that many have questions about when we will return back into the sanctuary. And so what we're doing is monitoring the progress of not only the nation, but our state. And we're looking around as pastors, we're sharing about when we are gonna come back into the sanctuary and how that procedure would take place. So our team has been talking and meeting and we're gonna do what's best for greater friendship. You know, I know in a couple of weeks, some have said that they're gonna start bringing in minimal numbers because they have spacing to do so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna judge it bi-weekly but we know that we won't be full force for some time. And we do have a process in which we're discussing if we were going to bring in a minimal amount of people. Because we do understand that many of us miss the sanctuary. But we want to let you know that we're keeping an eye on it. But there will be a process of disinfecting the church and some things like that. But we will keep you in the loop every two weeks. We will give you a status on where we are in our church and what we're going to do. And we're going to do what's best for great friendship. We're not going to follow the bandwagon about what other churches are going to do, but we're going to do what's safe for our church, and we're going to do it by the wisdom of God. So in another two weeks, we will reevaluate, and we will share with you what we're going to be doing in our church. So we love you. Keep us in prayer. Keep your pastors in prayer. You guys don't really understand how much you mean to us when you're away. You are somewhat a, a part of our existence and so we miss you and we love you we thank god for our musicians today we're so grateful for our wife and our children back there working on the media and we just want to tell you that we love you we love you we love you i am still taking meetings and i do that telephonically 
or you can be in the uh, parking lot calling me. I'm still visiting uh, at times, but if you need anything, still able to make an appointment with our, our, our assistant here at the church, and I can share with you as I've been calling all the members online, sharing with them and praying with them. But I want you to know that you're not alone. Amen? So you guys have a blessed week. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today. We bless you for the service. We thank you for the profound word of God, and we know that hearts were pierced, and we know that baptisms took place today. Fillings of the Holy Ghost took place today. The fruit of the Spirit will be exposed today. Lord, the gifts of the Spirit will be exposed today. Somebody's going to give someone a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Someone is going to be more meek, gentler, kinder, more patient because now they're filled. In the name of Jesus, I decree, declare, and command the filling of the Holy Ghost on every member of every church, starting with greater friendship in the name of Jesus, starting in our households in the name of Jesus. So we bless you today. We pray that you would have a blessed week. Keep them from car accidents. Lord, we rebuke COVID-19. No matter where they go, whether it be stores or jobs, we command protection around them. Angels of God, even now, move forth and we say thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom peace. God bless you. We look forward to hearing and seeing from you on Wednesday, 630 prayer. Get online. Walk with Holy Spirit. Get out. Take a walk. Exercise your body and your mind. Leave your phone at home. The Lord wants to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed week. Praise God.